I've always wondered, and I'm sure many people have always wondered, did Jesus uh, break the Sabbath law? Because uh, this is something that I was just reading about, and uh, I just said, okay, let me do a study about this and see. <laughs> because uh, the Gospels record several instances when Jesus healed a person on the Sabbath. Like, for example, we see uh, Simon Peter's mother-in-law uh, was healed on a day of Sabbath. That is in the book of uh, Mark chapter 1, uh, verse 29 to 31. It says, um, and uh, it says, And forth, forthwith, when they were come out of the synagogue, they entered into the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. But Simon's wife, mother, lay sick of a fever, and anon, uh, they tell him of her, and he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and immediately the fever left her, and uh, she ministered unto them. So they just come out of the synagogue, it was on a Sabbath, right? So Jesus healed on a Sabbath. And also we see again another incident is uh, uh, during a time when we see a man was uh, with a withered hand in the synagogue. That was a day of Sabbath. And of course, Jesus healed him. Let me just show you a couple of incidences and times when Jesus healed on the Sabbath. And uh, we see this one in the book of Mark, chapter 3, verse 1 to 6. It says, And he entered again into the synagogue, and there was a man there which had a withered hand. And they watched him, whether he would uh, heal him on the Sabbath day, and uh, that they might accuse him. And he said unto the man which had the withered hand, Stand forth, and he said unto them, uh, Is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath days, or to do evil, to save a life, or to kill? But they held their peace. And when he had looked around about on them with anger, being grieved for the hardness of their hearts, he said unto the man, Stretch forth thine hand. And he stretched it out, and his hand was restored whole as the other. And the Pharisees went forth and straight away took counsel with the Herodians against him, how they might destroy him. Because Jesus healed on the Sabbath, a day which is not supposed to, you know, they're not supposed to work. And of course, another time is uh, this, this guy who was born blind in Jerusalem uh, in the book of uh, 1 John. I, I mean, actually, John chapter John chapter 9 from verse 1 to 16, uh, the Bible says, And Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth, and his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither has this man sinned, nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me, while it is day, the night cometh, when no man can walk, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When uh, he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle. And then uh, he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay and said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way therefore and washed and came seeing. And the neighbors therefore and they which uh, before had seen him that he was blind said, it is, is it not he that sat and begged? Some said, This is he. Others said, He is like him. But he said, I am he. Therefore said they unto him, How are thine eyes open? He answered and said, A man that is called Jesus made me, made clay and anointed mine eyes and said unto me, Go unto the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed, and I received sight. Then said they unto him, Where is he? He said, I know not. They brought to the Pharisees him that uh, aforetime was blind. And uh, it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. That was the Sabbath day. This is our point here. And then again the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. He said unto them, he put clay upon mine eyes, and I washed, and I do see. Therefore, said some of the Pharisees, This man is not of God, because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. Others said, How can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? 
and there was division among them. That's another incidence when uh, Jesus heals on a Sabbath, a day which nobody should work. Let me give you a couple of more incidences. A crippled woman in the synagogue was healed by Jesus also on the day of Sabbath. Let's read the story here in the book of Luke, chapter 13, verse 10 to 17. It says, And uh, he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could not in all wise lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loose from thine infirmity. And uh, he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation, because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day again, and said unto the people, There are six days in which men ought to work in them. Therefore, come and be healed, and not on the Sabbath day. The Lord then answered him and said, Thou hypocrite, does not each one of you on the Sabbath lose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to watering? And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound, lo, these eighteen years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day? And when he had said these things, all his adversaries were ashamed, and all the people rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him. That's another time. All right? Let me show you uh, three more, all right? Just bear with me before I start explaining. There's also another time when Jesus healed on the day of Sabbath. And uh, he healed a man with a dropsy at a Pharisee's house, all right? This is uh, explained in the book of Luke, chapter 14, from verse 1 to 6. It says, And it came to pass as he went into the house of one of the chief Pharisees to eat bread on the Sabbath day. On when? On the Sabbath day, that they watched him. And behold, there was a certain man before him which had, had uh, the dropsy. And Jesus answering spake unto the lawyers and Pharisees, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath day? And they held their peace, and he took him and healed him, and let him go, and answered them, saying, Which of you shall have an ass or an ox fallen into a pit, and will not go straight away, pull him up on the Sabbath day? And they could not answer him these things. Hmm. We see also a demon-possessed man in Capernaum. You understand the story in the book of Mark 1, 21-28, and also a lame man by the pool of Bethsaida in uh, uh, John 5, 1-18. I don't want to go to those stories. You can go and read them uh, later on. So now, let's come to the main point. Did Jesus break the Sabbath law by healing people working on a Sabbath? Now, we understand whenever Jesus publicly healed someone on the Sabbath, the Pharisees always accused him of breaking the Sabbath law. This one is very well documented in the, in the book of uh, Matthew 12 verse 10. And behold, there was a man which had his hand withered, and they asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath day that they might accuse him? You see, they always wanted to accuse Jesus. They always wanted to accuse Jesus. In the book of Mark 3, 2, they also wanted to, uh, 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 they wanted to accuse him again. It, the Bible says in Mark 3, 2, and they watched him whether he would heal him on the Sabbath day that they might accuse him. That's how the world is. John 5, 14, Afterward Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole, sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. Mm-hmm. And of course, also we see John 9, 14, it says, And it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. Then again, the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. He said unto them, He put clay upon my eyes and washed, and I washed and do see. You see, Pharisees are always after Jesus. They want to know, okay, how can you be healing on a Sabbath? It's not lawful, right? But uh, Jesus' response was that he was working just as his father was working, an answer that did not appease the religious leaders because uh, (laughs) the Bible tells us in the book of John 5.18, for this reason they tried all the more to kill him. Not only was he breaking the Sabbath, but he was even calling God his own father, making himself equal with God. 
breaking the Sabbath would have been a sin. So we must ask the question, did Jesus actually break the Sabbath law? The short answer is, no, he didn't. But here is some good background of, you know, explaining why no. Okay. God instituted the Sabbath for the Israelites when he gave Moses the Ten Commandments. Okay. Uh, that is uh, in the book of Exodus. Uh, when you read Exodus uh, chapter 20, um, from verse 8 to 11, God himself set in. He put in the day of Sabbath. Okay. He said, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and uh, do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord God. Uh, in it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son nor thy daughter, thy main man servant nor thy maid servant nor thy cattle nor thy stranger that is within thy gates for in six days the lord made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that is in them and rested on the seventh day wherefore the lord bless the sabbath and hallow it all right so now the bible already tells us that um, that sabbath was set that way by by the father by god and on the seventh day of the week the Israelites were to rest, basically just to remember that God created the universe in six days and rested on the seventh day, just as the Bible tells us in the creation story in Genesis chapter 2 from verse 1 to 3. And the Sabbath was given for the benefit of the people. Mark 2, 27. The Bible says, and he said unto them, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. You see? Now are we coming to the point because men <laughs> men are living for the Sabbath but the Sabbath was made for man for him to rest, alright? And as a sign of the Mosaic Covenant in uh, Exodus 31 verse 13 um, we see uh, let me just show you something here the Bible says speak thou also unto the children of Israel saying verily my Sabbath shall you keep for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations that we may know that I am the Lord that does sanctify you. Okay? Over time, however, perspectives on the Sabbath changed. By Jesus' time, the religious leaders had added a burden, some rules and traditions for keeping the Sabbath and had elevated their own rules to the level of God's instructions. It was so bad that when Jesus' disciples picked and ate some heads of grain as they walked through a field, the Pharisees accused them of breaking the Sabbath because they were supposedly harvesting and threshing. Have you seen this one? The Bible says in the book of Luke uh, chapter 1, uh, chapter 6, actually, from verse 1 to 2, it says, And it came to pass, to pass on the second Sabbath after the first that he went through the cornfields, and his disciples plucked the ears of corn and did eat, rubbing them in their hands. And certain of the Pharisees said unto them, Why do you do that which is not lawful to do on the Sabbath days? You see? You see, they, they were accusing him. These people, they love to accuse. Why would you accuse Jesus did not break the Sabbath as outlined by God under the Old Covenant as he publicly stated do not think that I have come to abolish the law the prophets have not come to abolish them but to basically fulfill them that is in the uh, book of Matthew chapter 5 verse 17 it says about that and the Pharisees had uh, so conflated their own standard of holiness with with gods that they accused Jesus of breaking the Sabbath law. They were furious over Jesus' actions, yet it was only their Sabbath law. He did not keep. Jesus kept God's law, and he had done nothing to violate the Sabbath. And many Pharisees opposed Jesus, uh, saying that he taught with authority and like the scribes. That is in Matthew 7.29. They said, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. But Jesus is God. I wonder why they did not realize. They said, oh, he called out their hypocrisy, saying they do not practice what they preach. Mm -hmm. In the book of Matthew 23, verse 3, all therefore whatsoever they, de they bid you observe, that observe and do. But do, do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. You see, he, Jesus was pointing out their hypocrisy. They say something which they don't even do. He also equated himself with God. 
That's something else which really frustrated the Pharisees and the scribes. Look at uh, the book of John, chapter 5, verse 18. It says, Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. Mm, Okay? Of course, Jesus was God. And um, in the incidents... Uh, or in the incident involving the man with the withered hand, the Pharisees asked Jesus accusingly if it was lawful to heal on the Sabbath. And Jesus' response was full of logic. He said in Matthew 12 verse 1, If any of you has a sheep and it falls into a pit on the Sabbath, will you not take uh, hold of it and lift it out? How much more valuable is a person than a sheep? Therefore, it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. Jesus applied God's principles of desiring mercy, not sacrifice, referring back to Hosea chapter 6 verse 6, which says, For I desired mercy and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. All right? You see, people are more so about keeping the laws instead of having mercy and knowing God. And doing what is right. God is not after rules. It's just, you see, salvation is a relationship. Okay? If you get married to someone and uh, it's all about this is what you should follow, these are the set of rules you should follow in this house. Now, is that a relationship or is it, uh, is it just some work that you're doing? You should cook for me. Uh, you see, in the morning, lunchtime, at dinner time, I should make sure that they find food here. Uh, and you, you should make sure that you provide this and do this. And, you know, it's like you're setting rules. Fine, they're good. The rules are there. But setting rules, that does it make a relationship? No. God was not looking for rules. He's looking for a relationship. You tell him, Jesus, this is how I feel. He tells you, okay, my son, my daughter, let's, uh, I, I mean, God, because of course, uh, you have to understand that we are to be married with Christ. So let me bring in an example of uh, marriage. If God is, Jesus is your husband, then you just tell him, hey, uh, my dear honey, I, I feel like this. I feel this is happening. Please help me out on this. Help me out on that. And you show him love and he shows you love back. And uh, all in all, God the Father is the Father of Jesus and is your Father also. So it's not about a set of rules. It's about a relationship. And that is what these Pharisees did not know and understand. All right? This infuriated the Pharisees and they plotted how they might kill Jesus. Because this was just, come on, we, we need a set of rules. Because, you see, rules, they help people like the Pharisees to control the people. That's just basically how religion is like. Religion is, is controlling people. You tell them, don't get there. What did you do? Hey, you did not come to church today. So you're backslidden. Eh? You're backslidden. You're not coming. You're not giving your tithes and offerings. Eh? Eh? What happened? You're a bad person. You, you might go to hell if you don't. Come on. It's all set of rules. Jesus is not about rules. He said, do it from your heart. If it's giving, give as the Lord leads you. Don't be coerced. Don't be lied to. There are no rules anymore. It's over the rules. Okay? So they plotted how they might kill Jesus. In Matthew 12 verse 14, because of this, the Bible says, Then the Pharisees went out and held a council against him, how they might destroy him. Yet Jesus came to do the will of the Father and not to follow the man-made religious rules. John 5.19 Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The Son can do nothing of himself but what he sees the Father do. For what things soever he does, these also does the Son likewise. Jesus referred to himself as the Lord of the Sabbath in the book of Matthew, uh, chapter 12, verse 8. He says, For the Son of Man is, is a Lord even of the Sabbath day. He's the Lord of the Sabbath. All right? He's the Lord of the Sabbath. So now, if he's the Lord of the Sabbath, Jesus proclaimed that he's greater than the law and has authority over the laws that govern the Sabbath day. Jesus is the one who made all things. 
Okay. So he, he claims, okay, if you're the Lord of the Sabbath, then you claim you have power over the law. But uh, the Bible tells us in the book of John, chapter 1, verse 3, that all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. And in Colossians 1, 16, it also confirms and says, for by him were all things created. Who? Jesus. That are in heaven and that are in the earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he instituted the Sabbath day. He had the authority to overrule the Pharisees' traditions and regulations that they had placed on the Sabbath. By healing on the Sabbath, Jesus showed God's goodness, revealed the Pharisees' hardness of heart, and gave a glimpse of the full healing from sin that would soon be made possible by his sacrifice on the cross. Jesus did not break the Sabbath law, although he did act against the Pharisaical interpretation of the law. He broke the Pharisees' laws and they couldn't stand it. Jesus healed on the Sabbath to help people, to glorify God, and to remind people that the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. Just as the Sabbath was originally instituted to give people rest from their work and to turn people to God, so Jesus came to provide us rest from attempting to achieve salvation by our own labors. His sacrifice on the cross made a way for the law to be fulfilled and for the righteousness and the rest to come to all who trust in his finished work. You see, most of the time, we are looking forward and we are saying, I need to keep the law. I need to keep uh, Sabbath. I need to stop sinning. I need to uh, do whatever I can do so that I can win eternal life. But my friends, do we win eternal life by keeping the law? No. The Bible says that the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, to teach us and tell us how evil we are, to reveal our character. But now once we know our character, we can rely on God and tell him, God, we now understand that we are nothing, nothing purely on our own. We cannot be able to save ourselves. Please save us. If we say we want to save ourselves, then we cannot. Please save us. That's, that's why we have the whole law. The law is just a school master. It's just a teacher to tell us how evil we are. It's just like the constitution. It's just when, when, you, when you take the constitution and you read it, you get to understand what you're supposed to do. And what you're not supposed to do. And the things that you have done against the constitution. Now you are able to know, okay, I did this wrong. This is wrong. So my punishment is maybe going to jail for six months or doing this and that. So the same thing. But what if the time you go to court to be accused of what you've done, somebody comes and says, I will pay the price. Let me go to jail. Let me die for the sake of this sinner, for the sake of this person who has broken this law. That's exactly what Jesus did for us. We were supposed to die in our sins because the wages of sin is death. But Jesus said, no, 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 no. Let me do something. Let me die for this person. Let them have my life and let me have their death. And that's why the gospel, the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. The power of God unto salvation. What is the gospel? The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. It's all about understanding how that Christ died for our sins. He was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Believe the gospel and be saved. That's the only thing which can give you life. And that's the end of our today's Bible study lesson. Hope it was a blessing to you. Hope you did learn something. And remember, you can always download this podcast to listen later offline or to share to your friends and family. And please don't forget to favorite our podcast and uh, subscribe to our channel so that you can always be notified whenever we post a new Bible study lesson. And if you'd like to get saved or you need uh, step-by-step verses on the order of salvation so that you can well preach to your friends or family, or maybe just feel led to support our ministry or buy some cool Christian merchandise, kindly visit our website, keithmuoki.com for more details and breakdown. Otherwise, I hope to see you soon in the next one.